Today we'll have a look at a uh, brand of PTC cameras we haven't looked closely at before. This is from Vadio. And um, I think Vadio has been more known for cameras in the AV industry. But I think these models, they easily make themselves useful in broadcast as well. So we have the Vadio RoboShot 12 and also the 30. So that's 12 times zoom, 30 times zoom. And we also have HD base T versions of both these cameras. And Vadio also have a Ultra HD camera with uh, 20 times zoom. This is RoboShot 20. So today we'll look at these cameras with one of our very popular PTC controllers, the PTC Fly. And um, we have, of course, in the usual Skahoy style, done a lot to implement access to all the features in these cameras. And that's um, the really exciting thing about this. I think there are uh, probably not any other controller in the world that actually controls in hardware all these uh, great cameras from Vadio that we'll have a look at today. So let's dive into it and look at the cameras we have on the table in front of me here. Five cameras. This is the Ultra HD version. This is the uh, HDMI SDI versions. These are the HD base T versions. So we have 30 times zoom, 12 times zoom right here. And we have on the table also the PTC fly right here. So we can see that this controller has currently access to all four or five of the cameras. And um, well, maybe we should take out the PoE cable so you can see as I plug it in, it will now uh, boot up. So this is old display content, but now the controller boots and we will see when it's done booting. There we go. And pop, 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 pop. they all pop up. And we're just waiting for the final one. There we go. So as I now on the PTC fly select one of these cameras, I can move them. Okay, so we'll take a close up look on the PTC fly in just a second. But let me just uh, show you as I select camera number one, I will see this camera, they are not ordered. So I can I can move that one I can move. Um, this is the HD base T out here in the in the fringe of the picture and we have the uh, Ultra HD model here and then the RoboShot 12 and the 30 right here. Actually, we can even pull them together and this is such a fun thing to do. So as I press and hold the camera selector, I now have three cameras selected for synchronous movement and this is absolutely useless in most cases except a particular case that I'll just show you. So uh, now I have actually, um, oh, that I missed that one. So I'm now pulling them together. And um, so actually, th th the reason why you want to do that is because then you can adjust parameters on multiple cameras at the same time. That's the, the really the case between pulling cameras together on the camera selector. But it's just such a fun thing that we can also make all the cameras move at the same time. So when that becomes useful is when you press the top of the joystick, so that is typically mapped to the home action. And I do it now so you can see all the cameras they get into their starting position. And that's great, of course. So um, I want to take a closer look at the parameters that we can adjust in these cameras. And they are generally all the same, except some iris values differ between the various models. And that value is, of course, reflected on the display on the controller. So we know which iris is actually used uh, uh, the, on, on uh, whatever camera we are connected to. And uh, that's shown in the display. So let's take a close up look at um, the PDC fly now. We are coming out of the situation we had just before where all the cameras are selected. So uh, now I'm simply going to select just one of the cameras and we are working on that. You can see auto iris is enabled on this one. And if I turn the knob, I'm disabling auto iris. And um, we see the iris value here, which I can now adjust. So as I am turning the knob, uh, I admit the value is a little bit small, but I think you can see it if you are in HD. And you can also see on the picture that we are in fact adjusting the value. I'm just uh, going to zoom in on my target flower right here. So, um, and I'll come back to zoom speeds in just a moment. So here we have our target and you can see as I'm panning, I'm having slight difficulties getting that in, you know, um, framing that. That's about speed and we have a speed limiter in the control. I'll get back to that. So let's stay with the iris. So I have it off. I have uh, ability to adjust the iris, as you can see, and the values are nicely reflected in the display. Also, we have access to gain, so I can change the gain settings. 
And if I turn on auto iris, I get access to backlight compensation. So if I turn that one on and off, that's available when I'm in uh, on auto iris on. Now, if I press this button on the upper edge, typically how we program the PDC fly is that we let this cycle through menu options. So you see, uh, four presses and I have cycled through four different menus. And uh, when I'm in auto iris mode, I also have access to wide dynamic range uh, on this knob. Um, and uh, let's just go back and enable uh, or, or choose a, a manual iris here. I like that a little bit better. Um, Okay, so we go back here, we can see that we have auto white balance. So auto white balance is currently on. If I turn it off, I have access to gain R and gain B. And that of course means that you could actually program this into our RCP interface so that uh, you can use the RCP for color grading the uh, signal from the video cameras. So um, let's move on to the next menu. We have detail, that's uh, like sharpness parameters on most cameras. We have chroma, that's very easy to see the effect of the chroma. Uh, we can actually go almost colorless right there. Uh, we have gamma effects or, or gamma uh, levels on the signal. And finally, um, I have a video mute. So what you'll see now is that the, the signal is blanked out and then it comes back right there. So um, I think such as video mute is, is, is probably um, uh, typically used in AV environments where you may want to just blank out the video for whatever reason. Uh, less used in broadcast, I think, but it's there. And uh, of course we have access to it. Um, by the way, these cameras, they have a great web interface and um, maybe we should take a look at that as well and see how there's a correspondence between those parameters we are seeing on the controller and in the web interface. But let's just look at the final menu we have on the controller right here and um, autofocus on off. So if I turn autofocus on, um, no, actually I should keep it off because then you can see that I'm able to adjust the focus um, in relation to my target. So let's just move in a, a little bit more and uh, turn the knob so we can see that we are able to to focus on the target. Let me see, sometimes when I push the button, I get quicker access to focus. It feels like that's also the case right here. It depends on which features we implement. So you can see now, uh, as each time I'm clicking, I make large sig significant focus steps. Uh, let's just keep it here and then when I press it again, I now make smaller steps. So it takes a few more clicks before finally the flower is in focus. Okay, so this would also be a great time to take a look at the speed limitation. And um, those options are just next to uh, on, on, on this final menu page. And that determines how quickly well, uh, or how, what is the strength of the signal, the, the joystick outputs. And that's very important, in particular when you're zoomed this far into a picture. So we are now at 12 times zoom, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we are at 12 times zoom on this camera. On my target is just one meter away. And uh, it could correspond to somebody on the stage. You want to follow them, the slightest move, you just want to move it a little bit and not like big junky, uh, 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 jumpy movements. So um, that's very essential for making a good live adjustment of a PTC camera. Okay, so I'm now moving the joystick just a little bit and you can see how prone it is to move really quickly. That can be a challenge. And that's because the, the smallest speed step we have in this case is, um, that, that's really the smallest speed step. I'm just moving the joystick so little. We want to adjust the speed limiter so that the range of speed we have when we are, um, are panning is much less. So let's take a look at that. We have it right here. This is the speed limit for pan and tilt and it's currently at 100%. So nothing is done to limit the speed when I'm um, currently mo moving the joystick. But what we are doing now is to bring this down Let's just bring it down to, if I press again, I can make some bigger steps. So 25%, no wait, 15. Now look at what I'm doing. I'm moving the joystick and you can see the movement in the picture is much smoother. And if I if the move the joystick a lot, it's really not a lot of ground it's covering. So this is great if you are zoomed far in that you can limit the output of the joystick. Let's go to 5% and see what happens right there. You can see it's it's even better. So probably right now we are more or less at the limit of the camera. And I think 
by intuition, this is pretty good for a robotic camera. It's not every robotic camera that has this feature. So in fact, the video cameras are not Visca cameras and Visca has a 25 speed step. So if you want to have really smooth movement, you depend on the camera implementing some kind of speed limiter in itself. Otherwise you have only 25 steps. And the video protocol is completely different. It's um, based on some, uh, I hope this would be correct to say a REST API. So it's uh, some JSON code uh, API that works in these cameras. And um, what I'm hearing from my developers is that it's actually a pretty good interface for uh, working with them. They are happy about the response that they, they get out of the cameras. So, and that's a good sign. So I want to take a look at the web interface, which is a reflection of the parameters that we are adjusting in the cameras right here. And um, let's just go back to uh, a controller view, because if I go to the first menu, Auto Iris, you can now see in the web interface we have over here, we have Auto Iris, which is currently off. As I now press this, you can see that Auto Iris is turned on. And yes, the PDC Flyer reflects it because when we do implementations, we like to pull the state out of the devices we are controlling so that the displays on the Skyhoy controller will actually show what value is in the cameras or the broadcast devices we are connected to. That's another good sign of a really well implemented protocol that we have access to the values in the cameras. So we are happy about that. And um, other than that, we can simply see that if we go back to the controller, let's go to just white balance, for instance, if I turn on auto white balance, you can see that it gets turned on right here. And as I am uh, let me see. No, we need to go back because then we can see the red and the blue gain values. If I pull this slider, you'll see that these values are reflected in the displays right there. And likewise, if I'm turning this value up and down, you'll see the value is reflected in the web interface. Of course it is. Yes. So um, we have some notes to put down ab about the, um, the presets in the camera. So these cameras support presets which can include color information or not. That depends on uh, a setting. So um, if we go to store preset in the web interface, you can see this and um, you use this one. Then let's say we want to store position in a camera and you can see how there are options like store with current color setting. And if you check this one, it means that the preset will include the color settings of the cameras. Otherwise, it, it will probably just be pan tilt and zoom. Now, of course, that's an option you can choose on your Skyhoy controller as well. So um, what happens if you if, if you want to do this, you need to go to the configuration of the PTC fly. And for this, I'm just going to take a USB cable connect to the PTC fly like that. Um, so. Uh, it's, it's now connected to the PTC Fly and I can bring up my Skyhoy firmware application. You see it right here and if I press, um, let's try local configuration, it means that it's now taking the local web interface of the Skyhoy controller uh, forth in the web browser. So this is not, th this does not depend on, depend on being online. You can do this as long as you're computer is on the same network as your Skyhoy device, you can pull up the web interface of the local device and do certain configuration settings. And I'll now show you that the, the, the presets. So actually we haven't even shown presets. So let's just quickly take a look at presets here. So presets are accessed if you press on the lower edge of this button. So this is really toggling forth and back between having access to choosing a camera and then access to recalling a preset. Now, uh, we have already a, a preset for uh, our camera and we have completely spoiled the picture with the white balance here. So let's just get back and zoom out a little bit. Okay, let's just stay uh, right there. I, I s really feel like I need to go here and do a little bit adjustment on the iris as well. Like that. Okay, now um, let's, let's uh, let me see. Okay, let's go back to here. So that was camera four the one that we are recording. And now I want to store that in preset bank number five. I press and hold, okay? It becomes green. And now that preset is stored in that bank. Now, um, the, the, the change between those two preset modes will be visible from the interface. So I just pressed button number five in the interface. Let's go and look at the configuration for that button. Now we have two different states. We have a state called normal and state one. And in state uh, normal, 
we will use this button as a camera selector. That's when the button is green. Now um, we are we have a purple button, and that's state one. In state one, you can see there are three actions included depending on shift level, and uh, I may want to show you that just uh, shortly. And you can see that uh, if I press the button, it will start in preset five, and it will store color information. That's interesting. That's important because uh, it means as I will now change the color and store another preset, you'll see it's recalling color information. Uh, and basically, if you want it to not record the color information when it stores a preset, you'll choose no, of course. So let's just see if that's actually how it works. So we can go back and um, then we do some adjustment. Um, and I will also go to, uh, let me see. Yeah, okay. So we did some adjustment there. We now go and turn on auto white balance, uh, turn it off and adjust the picture a little bit. So it's really ugly now. And then we go back and we press and hold this button and we record preset number four. So let's press this one. So this recalls and this goes back to this one. So that was actually a really bad demonstration because it turns out that it did not actually store color information the way I imagined it would. Um, in fact, it didn't. Um, <coughs> so after my short timeout, I have to admit that we have a bug in the software. We are in fact not sending instructions to recall the color uh, settings of the camera, but it works in the cameras. I've just confirmed it that when you store settings with the web interface, ticking off the save with color, then it works. And I can show you that uh, we now have settings for preset five and uh, four. So when I recall preset five, it will move there and it also uh, will adjust the colors. If I press preset four, it's moving there and it's adjusting the colors. But if I recall preset number three, where I also tried to save colors using this, the PDC fly, it didn't work. So luckily, Video did it right, we did it wrong, we'll fix that bug and it's probably done by the time you see th this video. So um, that's uh, what I wanna say about the video cameras and the PTC Fly. It's uh, very exciting to support these new cameras, which uh, seem to have an audience in a different uh, uh, sector than the broadcast. And I think they are really, really great for, for broadcast as well, as far as I can see. They are great to control. They have the uh, ability to move slowly when we are zoomed uh, in, uh, far in. That's great. And I'm looking very much forward to hearing your feedback, all the users of video cameras out there. I hope you'll enjoy this new integration with the Skyway products. So the PTC Fly, the PTC Fly, we also have the PTC Pro, which is a larger surface that's of course also compatible with the video cameras. Let's get